Yo, what's up legends? If your PS4 controller is acting up with random movement, drifting like in Tokyo Drift, it's time for a real fix, not just software recalibration. In this video, I'm showing you how to physically fix stick drift by desoldering the old joystick module and soldering in a brand new 3D analog stick. I grabbed these exact modules from AliExpress. Super cheap, solid quality, and I've dropped the link in the description so you can get the same ones. We'll fully tear down the DualShock 4, swap out the stick, and make your controller feel brand new again. Let's go! If you've got any rubber thumbstick grips or caps on your joysticks, go ahead and pop those off. We need clean access to the sticks for the full teardown and replacement. Then flip your controller over and grab a precision screwdriver. You'll see four screws on the back of the DualShock 4. Carefully unscrew all four and keep them safe. Gently pull down both sides of the handles. Don't force it. Take your time and work your way around the edges. Use a plastic prying tool if you've got one, or just your fingers if you're confident. The goal here is to open it clean, no cracks, no stress. Now that you've loosened the bottom shell, gently pull up the upper shell. But hold up! The upper part is still connected to the motherboard by the charging port and LED lights connector cables. Now, unplug the touchpad flex cable from its port. Now, gently unplug the battery connector from the board first, then lift the battery itself out. Go ahead and carefully lift out the battery. Grab your screwdriver and carefully remove that screw. Once it's out, you can safely take out the battery plastic holder itself. Remove the touchpad flex cable connected to the board. Go ahead and desolder both motor wires using your soldering iron. Just heat the solder point gently and pull the wire away once it loosens. After, gently lift the motherboard out of the controller shell. Now, before we get into desoldering the analog modules, go ahead and remove the plastic thumbstick caps from both sticks. Grab a good quality solder wire and start pre-tinning the joystick pins. Just add a bit of fresh solder to each pin, this helps mix with the old solder and makes removal way easier. Don't flood it! Just enough to soften things up for desoldering. Now grab your solder braid wick, and before that, add a little flux on the joystick pins. It helps the solder flow better and makes cleanup easier. Place the wick over the pins, press your iron on top, and let it soak up the solder. Keep going until all pins are clean and solder-free. Let the heat and the tools do the job. Go ahead and gently lift both joystick modules off the board. If a pin feels stuck, double-check for leftover solder. Before installing the new sticks, give your board a quick cleanup. Use 99% isopropyl alcohol and a soft brush or cotton swab to wipe off the leftover flux. This not only makes it look clean, but gives you a finish better than factory. Now the board looks clean and fresh, like wow! Factory ain't got nothing on this. Go ahead and insert the new joystick modules carefully into the pinholes. Take your time, line it upright, and make sure you don't bend or break any of the pins. They need to sit flush and clean. Alright, now it's time to solder the new joystick pins back onto the board. Apply a generous amount of solder to each pin. Not too much, just enough to fully cover and connect. Use some flux or rosin to help the solder flow perfectly and get that strong, shiny joint. Take your time and solder every pin nice and solid. This is what makes it work like brand new. Everything's looking sharp and ready to go. Now it's time to reassemble the controller. But don't forget to mount the thumbstick plastic caps back on before snapping the shell together. Trust me, missing those is a rookie move. Let's finish this right. Now, carefully place the motherboard back into the shell, making sure it fits perfectly. Reconnect the touchpad flex cable gently, don't force it. Next up, place the battery shield plastic cover. Then secure it with the screw you removed earlier. Keep it snug, but don't over tighten. Then, solder the motor wires back onto their spots to restore vibration. 
take your time to get clean and solid joints. Finally, connect the battery connector back to the board, then carefully place the battery onto the plastic shield. Make sure everything sits nicely, no pinched wires or loose parts. Go ahead and mount the back shell carefully. Before fully closing, connect the flex cable gently. Make sure it's seated right. Then press the shell together and snap in those side plastic holders until you hear the clicks. Finally, screw in the four back screws to lock it all down. Don't over tighten. And you're good to connect the controller and test it out. If you see your sticks aren't calibrated right after this, no stress. If you want to calibrate, go to this site. Links in the description. I also made a full video on controller calibration. Go check that out. If you're vibing with this content, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any fresh tech tips. Got any doubts or suggestions? Drop a comment below. I love answering you guys. And hey, if there's any videos you want me to make, just ask in the comments. I got you. And as you can see, no more stick drift, no more jittering. The sticks are buttery smooth now. Perfect work right here. Totally worth the effort. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video. Stay tuned, stay techy.